video everybody it's your boy Jordan Poon and today I'm back with another video and today I want to talk about something super special you see Zenless Zone Zero is right around the corner and with so many gotcha games already on your plate I need to tell you why you need to add this one to your rotation as well so sit down strap in hit that like button and subscribe and let's get started with the video this game is fucking pretty. It's not Genshin pretty, but it's fucking pretty. I mean, just look at the art style and the way they bounce and move around. Ah, my, my bad, my bad. Uh, yeah, everyone's so fast, fluid. It's, it's just the way they interact with the world. Like, look at the way they animate Billy. He's supposed to be a cyborg, an android. So why this nigga so jiggly? It makes it interesting to watch. He reminds me of like Deadpool. And it's not just him, there's a lot of other characters that tend to act like this, or act like their respective selves, which is super dope! Not to mention that, I'm glad they went with this art style. For one, it looks like they actually cared making this game, and it looks unique compared to all their other games as well. Like with Genshin and Honkai Star Rail, it honestly just looks like Honkai Star Rail is in a different galaxy and hasn't reached Genshin's planet yet. Holy shit, what if that's what's gonna happen? But with ZZZ, it looks unique. It honestly looks like an animated movie. The graphics are super sharp, and it looks cell shaded kind of like Spider-Man, and I love it. I just wanna eat it up. And oh boy, let me talk about the character designs real quick. These characters designs are fucking fuego. Billy is honestly one of my favorites right now, and I could not tell that he was only a four star. Nicole, baby girl, she's a four star as well, but her design, her outfit looks super believable to me. It's honestly hard to distinguish the four stars and the five stars. Like I looked at Anby, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I can see the four star, but then I look at Soldier 11, and I'm like, wait a minute. This is the same bitch, but orange. Or I'll look at Coletta and I'm like, okay, that makes sense why she's a five star, I guess. She's like the leader of Bellabog. But then I look at Grace and I'm like, Nicole's titties are fatter, so why are you a five star? But I digress. Or if you look at this girl right here, her design is super cool, but she's also a four star. So I'm like, hmm, what, 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 what distinguishes them? Maybe their class? Maybe that's what it is. Their reputation might hold a lot more weight in determining if they're gonna be five star or not. Because in terms of the designs, it's super hard to distinguish. English, at least for me. Maybe you could be like, no, actually, you see, Grace has a fifth belt buckle, and so that's why she's a five star and Nicole is a four star. Good for you. But with that in mind, the characters are super diverse. Yes, that is a bear nigga that you're looking at. And yes, that is Ken Kaneki from Tokyo Ghoul, but a wolf. And yes, that is a shark lady. And yes, that is a cat girl. This game has people that fuck animals, apparently. Besides that, disgusting thought process the music is to die for the music is so good in this game kind of ridiculous from its hip-hop beats to its edm tracks to its slower more soulful hip-hop beats in the hub world man this is the first time i might have an ost slapping just for fun whoever made the music you were cooking bro now the storytelling the characters are super bright vibrant and expressive in the cutscenes even the npcs are expressive in the cutscenes look at this nigga he is fiending over this gold toilet rabbit thingy. He had a nosebleed for it, bro. That's that's just comical anime. I love it. There's another cutscene with Nicole right here. And this shit is to die for. It actually made me laugh. I was like, wait a minute. This game actually got a chuckle out of me. And it wasn't like some... It was like legitimate. I was like, oh shit, Nicole, you're so funny. <laughs> like, I was just, I was giggling. She giggled my boxers off, bro. You know where that's from, I respect you. And it's cool because they gave different ways to tell the story. You have your traditional cutscenes, and you also have your traditional standing there and idly talking to people, but at least they did make that a little bit more expressive at times. But they also gave us comic strip storytelling, where it looks right out of a comic book, and that's super cool. Like, bro, like, I can't wait to fucking feast on this game. You guys have no idea. And I know you are too. I don't care if you're playing Genshin, Honkai Star Rail, Wuwa, Ark Knights, Nikkei. You could add Zenless. What's one more? It's free. Just don't crack open that credit card unless you really need to. And then by all means, do what you gotta do. But one of the most important things that this game has that Genshin doesn't even have is a skip button. You heard me, a skip button. The game developed by a Hoyoverse team has a skip button. 
and you niggas thought I was being dramatic. Anyway, storytelling looks super good, super fun, super expressive. I love it. I'm excited for it. Definitely looking forward to that. Ooh, buddy, the voice actors ate with this shit. As of right now, the English VA's names have not been released, even though I strongly believe right here this is Kagi Alejandro Saab. This is you, I think it is you. But the voice actors, all the VAs ate, bro. Billy, Nicole, and B are my favorite trio right now. I'm not even joking. They're my favorite. They give me the vibes of like Ed, Ed, and Eddie. They feel like they've known each other for so long. It doesn't feel like they're reading off a script. It feels like they've literally been friends for so many so many years been going on adventures and shit and they're just talking to each other just, just shooting the shit like nicole's a bitch but she's like that bad bitch you know what i'm saying and she she gives off that same energy to billy who feels like the the troublemaker younger brother the idiot you know little i'm gonna give you a knuckle sandwich little nigga like <laughs> like he looks he acts like that and it feels natural meanwhile ambie's the quiet little little badass chick who eats all the food apparently and she fits that role too the voice actress doesn't sound dull and boring she sounds like she fits that role which which is respect it sounds like the people who casted them really were like nah you need you need to become Andy. you need to become billy you need to become nicole and they did and that's for a lot of the characters as well we haven't been introduced to everyone obviously but coletta was a very fun time she was super funny He's my favorite character right now. That's who I'm going to summon for. Ken Kaneki, Wolf Boy. His voice fits his demeanor. I'm very excited for him. This little chainsaw girl. I do not know her name, but she she is super funny to me. I don't I don't know why. This one scene right here made me crack up. I, I can't even lie. This shit made me crack up. And I'm typically not a fan of the very quiet, squeaky girl voice. But I'm actually looking forward to see how this voice actress did. And with that in mind, even the NPCs ate, bro. I mentioned that, that toilet rabbit lover from before, but like there's this other guy here in this Nekomata scene screaming because there's cats on him. And that shit was funny. Meanwhile, why these cats got nuts, bro? Why they hanging? Why they got the, why they got, really got balls, bro? What's going on here? They just walking around full shelfing, bro. What the fuck is this? Someone animated that, bro. They sat there and drew nuts on each one of these cats. They copy and pasted nuts and then colored the cats different. I don't want to think about the process, but if you're an animator, really think about that. They drew nuts on a cat. Anyways. Now the combat. In this section particularly of the video, I didn't want to talk about anything negative just yet. And it's not really a negative. It's more so of a concern I have. As you can see, I've watched a lot of gameplay of this game, from cutscenes to in-game exploration to the combat, and one thing that's super prevalent in the combat from beginner to high level is that the enemies look very easy. And what I mean is that for one, they have a huge window of time where they do not attack you back, even if you're in the middle of like 14 of them. Typically, they do not fight back. And my second concern is that they're really, really spongy. Now they can be attributed to builds, so maybe the people I was watching didn't have a good build just yet. But even then, I kind of wanted to see more testing my, my controls on the higher difficulty. I wanted to see them test my abilities because there's a whole s list of things to do and I'm going to list them out right now. For one. The combat is fast and fluid, that's that's for sure, it's very flashy. Despite being concerned about the enemies fighting back, nigga you attack and you do it well. For example, Billy, look at this nigga spin on his knees, look at him, he doing his little dancey dance on his knees while spinning around shooting, that's crazy. And you got Ambie hitting her moves, doing her backflips, you got Nicole shooting apparently black holes, but a lot of the characters have different moves and it's like, oh, this is, this is dope for sure. And when you switch characters, characters actually have intro and outro skills similar to Woo Wah. So I was like, okay, cool. I feel right at home doing this. And two of my favorite mechanics is that when you do switch characters, you also parry if you switch at the right time when enemies about to attack. So it's super flashy. But one of my favorite things is the team synergies. So I don't mean like, oh, I have all ice characters, so I do more ice damage. Nah, I don't mean that shit. I mean characters having specific synergies when they have two of the same characters or three of the same characters on a team. One of the ones that I'm familiar with right now is Coletta and Ben. And if Coletta and Ben are on the same team, Ben actually boosts her up and gives her extra attacks. And they have a specific ultimate when they're together. And it's like, oh, cool. I would love to see that expanded on more. Like maybe when you hang out with them more, you build a better reputation with them and they unlock moves. Similar to like Persona. I'd really vibe with that. 
Now, aside from the combat, there's the hub world that you'll be in, and that's your main place of habitation. When you're coming away from all the dirt and grime of combat, you wanna go explore. And there's a lot of things you can do in the city. For one, you can go eat so you can get buffs for your next battle. You can go drink coffee so you can get buffs for your next battle. You can go play the arcade so you can unwind playing Snake or like Dog Tetris. You can also hang out with the cast of characters that you meet, which is pretty cool. Take them on a little datey date or whatever. But one of the things I'm the most interested in is running the video store, mainly because I'm a sucker for those like cafe sim games where like you run your own shop, your own business, and you have customers coming in and you just farm them for money. You have to do stuff. And I'm like, that's similar to what I'm seeing with the video store. You get, you collect movies. And then when people come in to buy them, you have to interact with them and then give them the movie, sell the movie and you collect money. I think that's pretty cool. I would love to see that expanded on more. Also, before I forget, there's a day and night cycle. And I believe there are different activities you can do during the day and during the midday and during the nighttime. So that'd be cool to see as well now one of the best things you're going to hear from me saying right now is that the daily commissions do not take longer than 15 minutes to complete so that does mean if you're going to add this into your rotation which you're going to add this into your rotation you can finish it within 15 minutes and go play your other games and so for the people who complain about there's no end game listen bro with live service games there's always going to be end game the end game is waiting for more content that's the end game as of right now there's just a simulated universe so you can do that, and if you end up grinding that out into hell, time to play the end game, which is waiting for more content, buddy. And the next thing you're gonna hear, that you're also gonna like that I'm saying, is the gacha is similar to Honkai Star Rails. And from what I'm seeing content creators and people are saying on Reddit, is that it's pretty free to play friendly, which is really good to hear. And they actually have three different summonings right now. They have the normal summoning banner, they have the weapon banner, and then they have the little bunny guy banner. But the bunny one, you don't spend money on. You just spend in-game currency that you collect for it. So it's a cool little fun spin to do every once in a while. If you know any more details about the gacha, put that down below because I too much care about the gacha aspects of the games. I mainly play all these games because they're anime games. Not to gamble. I don't give a fuck about gambling. So if you know more, put it down below and we'll make sure to talk about that. Now here's when I speak on some real shit. This shit is not all sunshine and rainbows. There are issues with Zenless Zone Zero as well. Now thankfully, from the research I've done, it's nothing that updates can't fix. For one, the multiplayer is super bare bones. As of now, there's only one game mode. You can add your friend, but even then, you can't invite them to the same lobby. You have to matchmake with them. What the fuck? I'm hoping that gets addressed when the full game releases. It at least needs to have the invitation systems. More game modes can come later, but what do you mean I can add you, but then I have to matchmake with you? Like, what, What's the point of me adding to that? Number two, I've already addressed this, but the easy and spongy enemies. It's still very alarming to me, y'all. The amount of enemies I watch people fight and there was a good amount of window when enemies weren't attacking and it was only a certain amount of times when enemies would actually turn up i'm like man i really hope that i'm just imagining this or that this was just cbt or people were actually playing on easier difficulties than i thought i'm really hoping that the enemies do fight back more especially on higher difficulties beginner game i understand and easier difficulties of missions i completely understand but that was all of my main concerns it wasn't actually that many negatives it was just a couple things the enemies not fighting back was a concern for me, but then also the multiplayer. This is a game that I feel would thrive in multiplayer aspects. We're going to talk about that more in the next section. This is the section where I talk about things I hope they add for the future. And to continue off where we started, the multiplayer. I hope that we can have a central hub world where all the people can meet a multiplayer round. Since you can have three people, I'm hoping you can also have three people inside the hub world. Kind of like the Monster Hunter world, like cavern area where you can go and chill with your friends, get in a hot tub, etc, etc. I really hope they add that with this. It'd be dope to be able to like have your friends come over to your, your video store, watch movies or whatever, and they kind of can like buy stuff from your store and support your business, you know? It'd be cool to like take them to arcade and whoop their ass and snake or like Tetris game, just doing stuff, doing activities that makes the multiplayer feel more alive. And then right when you're ready to set out, you can go eat your food to you get your buffs and then head out on your missions. So I'm hoping there's some like raid mechanics as well, but we'll see. We're throwing out all these ideas. It's up to the devs to add it, man. But please let us decorate our video stores. Please take the teapot idea. Let us do that. Just let us decorate it on the inside, the interior. 
if we can't already. The one thing I really ask for. And secondly, I'm hoping for more maps. New Eridu is just one city on this giant planet. And from what I'm understanding from Billy's lore, he's not originally from New Eridu. He's from another area. I would love to see that area or other areas around the world. The world's a big place. I'm sure New Eridu isn't the only place that exists. You gotta get your ramen from somewhere, your imports from somewhere. Who's building these robots? So I'd love to see those other areas. Third is the combat. I don't see the combat getting repetitive anytime soon, but I hope down the line they do add some story missions where you can have more expanded combat. I feel like this game would excel with aerial combos, as as of right now you can't jump in the game. That's You can't jump in the hub world or in combat, so everyone is grounded. But from what I'm hearing, a lot of people said the combat feels good and it's fun, so that's not a bother to me, it doesn't really bother me. But that'd be cool, like Honkai Impact 3rd, they added its other game modes where you can go and jump around and zip line and you have an expanded gameplay system. So I'm hoping they can do that with Zenless. I, I just would love to see the game expand on itself. And number four is more diversity. Listen, if you can add a 12 foot bear nigga, a red Japanese man, a French teapot making coffee, a shark maid, and Kaneki the wolf, Billy the cyborg Deadpool, Whatever this thing is with big titties, you can add black people. I would love to see some natural diversity. You can start off with NPCs. You add playable characters, more power to you. But I would love to see some more diversity than just animals. And please, make it tasteful. I don't want to see some big lip Mr. Popo, Mr. T, or Barrett inspiration. People have already done it correctly, so I know you can too. And if you really need some inspiration, you can hit my line, you know? <laughs> That's jordancoon at gmail.com. I'm more than willing to help with just a small fee. But I'm honestly looking forward to ZZZ. Weathering Waves and Zenless Zone Zero are going to be the two games that I have in rotation. So I'm super excited to have two games that I know I can binge and not get tired of. Plus, I see a lot of you fakers talking about, uh, I'm not gonna play the game, it looks interesting, but I'm just gonna watch, or I'm not even gonna touch it, it looks stupid. And how'd this game get 40 million pre-registrations? Some of you are lying. Some of you are trying to save face. If you like the game, say you like the game. You have FOMO, people have FOMO, you're not gonna miss out on this game. What are you, what are, what are you missing out on? Time, money, it's a free game. All you have to do is download it and play it. If you don't like it, drop it. I'll see you on day one. But with that out of the way, let me know what you think of ZZZ. Were you interested in it before I started talking about it? Did this video help you make a decision on whether you're going to play it or not? Or are you more intrigued? Because I'm going to let you know now, when this game comes out, I'm going to be posting two times a week. One day for ZZZ and one day for WooWa or whatever else I'm going to be playing at the time. But ZZZ is going to be in rotation for the pursuit of the future, so two times a week. And if you're excited for that, please leave a like and subscribe. Comment down below, let's talk. What are you thinking about ZZZ? Do you like the characters? Do you think this is going to die day one? Do you think it's going to kill Genshin? Like, <laughs> what do you think? Let me know down in the comments. I'll meet you guys there. But other than that, my name is Jordan Kuhn. Please don't forget me, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.